Hello all, welcome back to Career Launcher. For the last 40 days, ever since it was 45 days left to CAT, we have been releasing daily practice questions, taking questions, solving questions that are taken from our mocks. The reason we wanted to do that is because that time was a high time for you to start your revision. At this point in time, however, with less than one week to go to the exam, I would suggest you did not get involved in a lot of hard work. Instead, what you should do is revise a few concepts and revise a few formulae if you want to revise from the area of quantitative ability and data interpretation and logical reasoning. Similarly, for verbal ability, it is probably time for you to go ahead and take a look at, you know, build that rhythm of just reading instead of actually solving questions or taking a lot of notes. So basically, this is the last video in this series of 45 days that we started off 45 days to get. Ever since then, we have been releasing one video every day. Tomorrow onwards, for five days to cat, to four days to cat, three days to cat, so on. What we will be doing is we will be asking our mentors to come up with their last minute tips for cat, and you would not probably want to miss out on that either. So thank you for watching these videos. But let, let us know what you think about these kind of videos, what you think about what kind of other content that you are looking forward to in the future. Even after cat, what kind of content would you look forward to? For example, like let us say Snap and Zad here. All your comments are more than welcome. 46, countdown cat 8. A regular octagon is formed by cutting an isosceles right angle triangle from each of the corners of a square. So there is a square. There's a square and you're cutting a right angle triangle, isosceles right angle triangle from each of the corners of the square. So basically you're cutting a side like this. Like this. Like this. And like this. So that whatever is formed here is a regular octagon. That means all the sides of this octagon have to be equal. All the sides of this octagon have to be equal. And what you are cutting is, is, is isosceles right angle triangles. If each of the side of the octagon is two units, what is the area of the square? So if the octagon has two units, if this is two, let us say, let us call this A, this B, and this is C. In triangle ABC, because this is a right angle triangle which is isosceles, so where this angle will be equal to this angle. If this angle is x, this angle is x 45 degrees, then what will happen is that if this is equal to 2, you will find that AC square plus AB square is equal to 2 square such that AC is equal to AB because it is a right angle triangle which is isosceles. That means 2 AC square should be equal to 4 or AC should be equal to root 2. As a result, you will find that this length is root 2. This length is root 2. So whatever happens in one of the corners has to happen in all the corners. Root 2, root 2. So if you look at what is what is the length of the sides of, of this square? What is the length of the sides of this square? A, P, Q, R. What is the length of the sides of the square? A, P, Q, R. If you look at it, what you will find is that each of the sides will be 2 plus root 2 plus root 2, which is 2 plus 2 root 2. 2 plus 2 root 2. So the area of the square is going to be 2 plus 2 root 2 whole square, which is equal to 4 plus 8 plus 8 root 2, which is equal to 12 plus 8 root 2, which is option 3. Look at question 50. Four points P, Q, R and S lie on a straight line in that order such that PQ is equal to RS and QR is equal to 32 centimeters. So if I have a straight line, all of PQ, RS lie on the same straight line. P, Q, R and S lie on the same straight line such that PQ is equal to RS and QR is given as 32 centimeters. QR is given as 32 centimeters. Point T is not on the line. Point T is not on the line and PQ is equal to TR is equal to 20 centimeters. So point T is somewhere about here. Point T is equidistant from Q and R. From Q and R, that means T has to lie on the perpendicular bisector of Q and R. So, such that this length is 20 and this length is also 20. Okay. If the perimeter of triangle PTS is double the perimeter of TQR, perimeter of triangle PTS is double the triangle the perimeter, perimeter of PQR. Perimeter of PTS is double that of P TQR. Okay. So what is the perimeter of TQR? TQR, the perimeter is 20. 
plus 20 plus 32, which is equal to 100, which is equal to 72. That means if you call this side Y, this will also be Y. The reason being, the reason being, this is a symmetric figure. This is a symmetric figure. If T is equidistant from Q and R, T also has to be equidistant from P and S because P and Q and R and S, the lengths are equal. So in that sense of the world, if you look at it, in, if you look at this and you call this X and this, this area X and this region Y, what will happen is that the perimeter of P, T, T, P, S or P, T, S will become X plus Y plus X plus Y plus 32, which should be equal to 2 times of 72. So you'll get 2 times of X plus Y is equal to 112 or you can say X plus Y is equal to 56. X plus Y is equal to 56. So X plus Y should be equal to 56 is one part of the question. And we know for sure, and we know for sure that T is equidistant from both P and S. Next thing that you need to crack over here is that if you draw this perpendicular over here, if we draw this perpendicular over here and let us call this point O, then OQ will be 16 and OR will be 16. After all, T lies on the perpendicular y sector of QR, otherwise it will not be equidistant from both the points. It will not be equidistant from the both, both the points. So if you look at triangle OQT, which is the right angle triangle, if this line is 16 and this length is equal to 20, if this is 16 and this is 20, then you can say that the height of the triangle, you can say that the height of the triangle is going to be equal to 12. You can say that the height of the triangle is going to be equal to 12. Height of the triangle is equal to 12. Now, if you look at triangle POT, which is also a right angle triangle, what can you say? You can say that PO plus OT square must be equal to PT square. So you have PO square, which is X plus 16 whole square plus OT square, which is 12 square, should be equal to PT square. What is PT? PT is what Y? What is Y? Y is equal to 56 minus X. 56 minus X whole square. If you open this and try to find, figure this out, what will happen is that you will be able to find out the value of X and that is what we are really interested in. We are interested in finding what is PQ. That is the value of X. So how to, what will this become? You will get X square plus 32X plus 16 square plus 12 square is equal to 56 square minus 112X plus 56 square minus 112x plus x square. So x square, x square is the first thing that gets cancelled and I'm very happy. So x squares gets can, get cancelled. As a result, what you have is 144x is equal to 56 square minus 16 square minus 12 square. 56 square for all we know is 3025-3136. And then you have 16 square, which is 256. And this is 144. So this is 3136 minus 3136 minus 400. 144x is equal to 3136 minus 400, which is equal to 2736. 2736, you'll find that X is equal to 19. You'll find that X is equal to 19 centimeters. As a result, what will happen is that if X is equal to 19 centimeter, Y will be equal to 37 centimeter. Y, y will be equal to 37 centimeter. You could have directly used either the Pythagoras theorem using the options also. For example, you have a 12 over here. So X plus 16. So if X was 19, this would become 35. As a result, you'll get 1369 as the sum of squares of 12 square plus so 12 square plus 35 square would become 1369 which is nothing but 37 square and this would this pair of numbers 19 and 37 would also satisfy this condition and you could have looked at it like that also let's take a look at question 52 now two sides of a square lie on the lines x plus y equal to 3 and x plus y is equal to minus 5 find the area of the square formed using this two lines all right so first let us try and construct the lines and see how good we are at construction first of all 
x plus y equal to 3. In this line, if you put x is equal to 0, y is 3, y is equal to 0, x is 3. So this passes through 3 and 3 over here. This is the line that looks like this. Okay. X plus y is equal to minus 5. You put x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 5, 0 comma minus 5 or minus 5 comma 0. So this line passes through these two points, minus 5 and minus 5. Such that both the lines are parallel. Otherwise, these cannot be sides of squares. Okay, these two lines are parallel. The question is, find the area of the square form. See, the area of the square form is a function of the side of the square. And the side of the square will be equal to the perpendicular distance. The perpendicular distance between the two lines. To find the perpendicular distance, yes, there exists a formula in coordinate geometry and stuff like that. But could we have done something, uh, something that is very easy? Something that is very easy. If I draw a line, if I draw a line, if I draw a line, x is equal to y, or we call it y is equal to x. The slope of this line, the slope of this line is 1. The slope of this line is minus 1. Can I say these two lines, this line, y is equal to x, is also perpendicular to this line, and it is also perpendicular to this line. So whatever is the length of this segment, that is the midpoint of these two points and the midpoint of these two points should be the length of the square. So if we try to figure out what is the midpoint of these two points, you'll get 3 by 2, comma 3 by 2 over here. As well as when you look at the midpoint of minus 5 and minus 5 over here, you'll get minus 5 by 2 and minus 5 by 2. What is the distance between these two points given that this is a perpendicular angle? This is a 90 degree angle already. So in that case, in that case, what is the difference distance between them? It will be equal to 3 plus 5 by 2 whole square plus 3 plus 5 by 2 whole square. Now that we know the coordinates, you can use the distance formula in coordinate geometry. So you'll get 4 square plus 4 square under root of, which is equal to 4 root 2, which is equal to 4 root 2. So the length of this side, let us call this O and this, let us call this M. OM is equal to 4 root 2. If OM is equal to 4 root 2, length of the side of the square is 4 root 2. Length of the side of the square is 4 root 2. Area of the square is going to be 4 root 2 whole square, which is 32. 4 root 2 whole square, which is 